Good day class. Welcome to another tutorial on multiplying fractions. Today I would like to teach you about a strategy called cross reducing. But before we do that, I want to review with you what I taught you in the previous multiplying fractions tutorial. In that tutorial, I told you that when you're multiplying fractions, you multiply the numerators and you multiply the denominators. So let's rewrite this just to review. The new numerator is going to be the product of five times three and the new denominator is going to be the product of six times 10. So then we would, we would multiply them out. Five times three is 15 and six times 10 is 60. And like before, we need to find, we need to simplify. We need to find the greatest common factor. In this case, it's gonna be 15. We're gonna divide 15 by 15 and we're gonna divide 60 by 15. 15 divided by 15 is one, 60 divided by 15 is four. That is a strategy I taught you in the previous tutorial and it will always work. But what I wanna teach you today is going to make it more efficient and you'll get to work with easier numbers. It's called cross reducing. That means you can reduce before you even multiply diagonally across. In this case, the five and the 10 are diagonally across from each other. We need to find the greatest common factor for five and 10, which would be five. So we're gonna divide five by five to get one and 10 divided by five to get two. And then we're going to do the same thing diagonally across the opposite direction. Actually, I want to do that in blue in this direction. So the greatest common factor for six and three is three. Three divided by three is one. Six divided by three is two. Now, if we rewrite the numerators, we get one times one is the new, new, is going, is a new numerator and two times two is the new denominator. If we multiply, one times one is one and two times two is four. And you can see that we got the same answer here as we did over here, but the cross reducing strategy is much more efficient and you get to work with more manageable numbers. Here's another question <clears throat> I would like you to try and we're going to use the cross reducing strategy to solve it. Before I go through it, I'd like you to pause the video here and I'd like you to try it on your own and then you can restart it and check your answer. All right, now that you've tried it on your own, let's check it. So again, we're going to use the cross reducing strategy and we're gonna use the seven and the 14 and we're going to <clears throat> find the greatest common factor. In this case, it would be seven. So we divide seven by seven to make one and we divide the 14 by seven to make two. And then we're going to reduce the other way diagonally, the four and the eight. So again, we're gonna find the greatest common factor and the greatest common factor between four and eight is four. So four divided by four is one and eight divided by four is two. Now, if we do the math, rewrite it, one times one and two times two. If we do the math, we get one over four. Here's one more question I'd like you to try. Again, I'd like you to do it on your own. Pause the video restart it and check your answer. So we're going to start we're going to start by reducing here between the 8 and the 22. The greatest common factor between 8 and 22 is 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 22 divided by 2 is 11. And then we go to the 9 and the 18 and we're going to reduce across this way and the greatest common factor between 9 and 18 is 9. 9 divided by 9 is 1. 18 divided by 2 is 2. And now we're going to rewrite it. Four times two is the new numerator and one times 11 is going to be the new de denominator. Four times two is eight. One times 11 is 11. 